Aloha, good morning, Grace Central family and friends. I'm back. <laughs> thank you for those of you who've been praying for me, Grace Central fam. Uh, thank you. Uh, back, healthy, strong as ever, ready to continue on in our series, joyful and triumphant. Look, we got the Christmas tree up in the back, uh, ready to go. Uh, I want to say thank you for journeying through 2021. And as we close off the year, how we end 2021 is how we will begin 2022. And so I want to end this year strong, especially during this Christmas season. Tis the season, right? We're in that season of celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, in fact, towards the end of our online service here this morning. And thank you for those of you uh, who are here for the 10 o'clock start uh, the new time uh, for our online service. Um, we're going to have communion towards the end of the service. So uh, I got my communion elements uh, ready to go. So go ahead and grab your communion elements if you have not done so already. And in fact, invite someone. I, I want to encourage you, invite someone to join with you for our church online service today. I believe the message is from the Lord and He wants to encourage us during this season to truly be joyful and triumphant. Right? Isn't that the reason for the season that Jesus Christ was born? And that's what we're celebrating, that the Savior was revealed to us, right? That the, the Savior was revealed to us, the Son of God. Anyways, Gary Central, it's so good to be back with you. I want to encourage you, in fact, next week to join us for in-person live worship of the Word. Great testimony we're going to hear from Chauncey and Wilma Bertola uh, next week, great couple, and their journey of faith and how God has really revealed himself uniquely uh, to them and that they're truly, truly joyful and triumphant as well. Anyways, Grace Central, fam and friends, let's stand to our feet. Let's acknowledge the presence of God coming into our homes, coming into our lives, and let's honor our awesome God. Done. Put your hands together. Here we go, come. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Before him, our Savior is born. Let us adore him, adore him. Christ the Lord. That's it. Merry Christmas. Verse 2. Sing choirs of angels. Sing in exaltation. Oh, sing, all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God. Verse 3.
ourselves to you and worship at your feet for you are worthy to be praised this is my desire to honor you Lord said in your word that you know you don't look at the outward appearances of people 
You look upon our hearts, and that is what you desire most, is the heart, the contents of our heart, the yearnings of our heart. Father God, we pray, we ask right now that you would begin to remove the things that are not of you, the blockages, the stains, the, the hurts, things that are taking the spot where you belong. Father God, we present ourselves this morning. We lift our, our hands to you in a posture of surrender and humility, God. Father, we remove the pride. We humble ourselves to make room for the Holy Spirit to do its work. Father God, capture every tear, every pain, every suffering. Let not one of them drop to the ground. God, capture them in your heart. Oh, Holy Spirit, we know that you are a good, good Father. You said in your word, if we who are evil know how to give good gifts to our own children, how much more the Heavenly Father? So, Father God, I thank you. If there is a need this morning, just raise your hand up, present it to your to the Heavenly Father, just between you and God. Right now, just take this moment to present your need to our Heavenly Father. He's here. He's listening. Father, we give collectively, we take all these prayers and we present them to you, our Abba Father. We give you these, but more importantly, we give you our heart. Lord, I give you my heart. Give you guys my sing this. Isn't God good this morning? Let's give him some praise. Welcome to Grace Central. We're so glad you're here and would like to ask you to take a few moments to fill out our connection card found at our website, highgracecentral.org. By filling out this card, you can connect with others, join a grace group, and also let us know if any prayer requests you and your loved ones may have. Remember, we're in this together, so let's stay connected together. Aloha Grace Central, thank you for joining us. My name is Jenny, I'm one of the leaders here, and I'll be receiving our tithes and offering today. I wanted to share a scripture from the book of James. And in this scripture, the Apostle James is talking about the difference between faith, our belief in God, and our deeds, what we do to be able to show that belief. And he talks about how faith without deeds is dead, but at the same time says, Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. And really saying that because of his belief and his strong faith in God, he was able to do so much more because he knew that that purpose was there. And in our giving, I think it's the same way. I know that when I give, I'm able to give to God, to his purposes, and really know what we're sowing into. Let's pray. God, we just thank you for being an amazing God, for loving us so much and giving us this opportunity to be able to serve you with our giving. And we pray your grace over everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. 
God bless you as you give. If you'd like to give online, you can do so by going to our new giving website, gracecentral.churchcenter.com, or by downloading the Church Center app on your mobile device. Church Center is a part of the Planning Center program suite and uses a secure payment processor to handle all giving. If this is your first time giving, click the Give button and enter the amount you'd like to give, as well as a designated fund, frequency, and your contact information. If you've given before, you can log in before entering your gift information. Thank you for partnering with Grace Central as we honor God and make disciples. Good morning once again, Grace Central fam and friends. How many of you can believe it? We're less than two weeks away from Christmas. And next week, we'll, we'll be celebrating our Christmas service uh, here at Grace Central, whether you're online or in person. I want to encourage you, um, let it be a Christmas gift to yourself, to your family, to your friends, and join us in person uh, there at St. Anthony Retreat Center for live worship, live fellowship with, with people coming together coming together and adoring Jesus Christ together uh, there at St. Anthony Retreat Center. Um, really appreciate uh, online community for being here with us. I'm ready to dive into the Word. If you have your Bibles, Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 26. Um, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he'll be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he'll reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for our online community. Thank you for friends who are joining us here for the first time or those uh, listening to the recording for the first time this morning. Father, may your word and your spirit teach us, encourage us. Lord, especially during this holiday season, I pray for those who are just having trouble being victorious in their lives and experiencing the joy that, Lord Jesus, you came to give us. Father, I pray through your word and through your message this morning, Lord, that you would infuse in us your spirit, God, that would truly be joyful and triumphant indeed. We thank you. We praise you now. Teach us, O Holy Spirit. Empower us, O Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you agree with that prayer, go ahead and type in the chat. Amen. Um, first of all, let's talk about Nazareth, right? Nazareth, the angel of the Lord, Gabriel, came to send a message to Mary. He was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth. You know what's remarkable about Nazareth? That it's nothing really remarkable about it. It's a very common place. It's not even mentioned in the Old Testament and chronologically, this is the first mention of Nazareth in the Bible. It's a general region of, of Galilee, 15 miles, although it is part of 
the region of Galilee, the city of Nazareth was 15 miles from the actual Sea of Galilee, six miles from the closest major roadway. In fact, I heard there, there wasn't even a good water supply at the time. And those of you here on Oahu uh, know that we have an issue regarding water supply here in the islands, right? There was only one good well that was working there in, in, Nazarene, in Nazareth. And Jesus yet identifies with this place. Throughout Scripture, you hear Jesus from Nazareth. And that the followers, the, the early followers, were called Nazarenes. What good news for you and I today that what, what, is, seemingly unco- what is seemingly common, what is uh, uh, perceived to be un- uh, unremar- unremarkable, right? Nothing outstanding about it. Jesus identifies with Nazareth. The good news for ordinary people like you and I is that great things can come out of Nazareth. We don't have to be that superstar. We don't have to be well-educated. We don't have to come from a great line of, of succession for God to use us to bring Him honor and glory, to be blessed that we can be a blessing. Nazareth. God can do great things through you and I today. Great things c- can come from places that are seemingly dry, dead, unknown, tucked in the corner. What good news to begin our message this morning together to hear from God that God wants to use people like you and I. Tell the person sitting next to you, God wants to use you. If you're by yourself, just say, God, thank you. Thank you that you can use me to fulfill your plans and purposes. Joyful and triumphant. Right? If there's something to be joyful about even right now, is that God wants to use you and I to bring Him greater honor and greater glory. Let's look at the three things uh, that Gabriel told Mary that I believe is for you and I today. First, Gabriel told Mary who she is. She was highly favored. Right? We know in Ephesians 1.6 that God has blessed us with the beloved Jesus Christ and that we are highly favored. Just on a biological standpoint, you and I, with the chromosomes and our unique DNA, you and I are highly favored. If you change our DNA just one notch here and there, we would be someone else today. But God has highly favored you and I, that it is you and I that exist today. By God's grace, by God's grace, we're highly favored. Mary was highly favored. She was chosen by the Most High God to conceive and bear this child. And I believe the same thing for you and I today. We're highly favored that God chose us to be here for such a time as this, during this holiday season, to bring Him greater honor and greater glory. That's the calling of our God. That's the calling on our lives to know Him and to let Him be made known to those around us. Secondly, Gabriel told Mary, the Lord is with you. Tell the person sitting next to you, the Lord is with you. It's a great reminder today, right? You might be stressed out with all the Christmas holiday, uh, gift wrapping, buying, meeting with people, parties, deadlines for work and school. The Lord God is with you. What great comforting words that Gabriel gave to Mary that I believe the Holy Spirit wants to give to you and I today. That the Lord our God is with us. He wants to be there for you. Look at Romans 8.31 says, If God is for us, who can be against us? God wants to be there with you. So I want to encourage you. Get in a group. Attend service online, in person, weekly. I'm going to make one last push. Okay, one last push. Maybe it's time now with all the numbers going down, people being vaccinated. Let's gather in person by faith. Let's be reminded where two or three are gathered. I'm there in their midst, Jesus said. There's something about being there in person, right? I love watching my sports on, on, on the television, 
uh, streaming, whatever it is. But there's nothing like being at the game in person, live. And in the same way as we worship and, and honor the Lord, there's nothing like being there in person. All right, all right. I said that's the last time I'll say that. The Lord is with you. Thirdly, Gabriel told Mary, and I think the Holy Spirit wants to remind us that we're blessed. You and I were blessed. Remember, we just came off two weeks ago from Thanksgiving, where we paused long enough to give thanks to our God, to have that gratitude and say, God, thank you. I don't come from the most perfect family, but thank you for my family. For those of us, for those of you who are single, right? Thank you, God, for the season of singleness. For those of us who are married, thank you for the season of being married. You know, whatever it is, whatever season you're in, we're here to give thanks, to be reminded that we are blessed. Not blessed so that we can be full of blessings, but we are to be blessed, receive the blessings from God. Why? So we can be a blessing to those around us. What great comforting words from Gabriel to Mary that I believe God wants to tell us today that we're highly favored, that the Lord God is with us, and that we are blessed. Now I want to shift the focus in this passage of Scripture to the main character, Jesus. Jesus being the focus. That's why here at Grace Church, I always say, read the Word of God, because as we read the Word of God, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, oh, we need to be reading our Word daily. Reading the Word of God shapes us to who, who we are, who we're called to, how we think, our attitudes. Listen, you may be watching you know, all the great Christmas movies, and I've been watching a lot of great Christmas movies, it's a Wonderful Life. That's my favorite Christmas movie during this time of year. It's a Wonderful Life. And the many others. Whether you're reading books, listening to podcasts, the news, um, YouTube clips, all these bombard our minds and shapes our minds, our hearts, and our attitudes. How much more in this world, which is already difficult to live in and with all the stressors in life, how much more we need to read the Word of God to shape our minds, our hearts, and our attitudes. Peace be still. And we need to be still long enough to know that He is God. Psalm 46 verse 10 reminds us to be still and to know that He is God, that He would be exalted in the nation, starting with us, starting in our own lives, that we would exalt Him. Is Jesus the center of your life right now? And with all the busyness of, of life, all the worries of the world, how much more we need our nativity scene to have Jesus at the center. And in our lives, placing Jesus at the center. No one in the history, in the history of histories has influence mankind more than Jesus Christ. We've had many uh, uh, generals, many of uh, uh, leaders, many of us uh, saviors even, none of them greater than Jesus Christ. No one greater than the Son of the living God. Jesus would be the Son of Mary, but not only her Son, who would also be known as the Son of God the Son of the Most High. And it wasn't that during this event that happened about 2,000 years ago that Jesus became the Son of God. It was just 2,000 years ago in history, it was revealed to us that He is the Son of God. Because from the very beginning of time He existed, that Jesus Christ existed from the very beginning of time, even before time existed. That Jesus was and is the Son of God. When Gabriel came to Mary, Gabriel quoted from Isaiah 7, 14, The virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And this name, Jesus. Right? In the Hebrew, it's Yeshua. Right? Joshua. That's why many of, of the Jewish girls during that time would name their boys 
Yeshua, right? Joshua, or give the name Jesus. Why? Because they knew that through Yeshua, uh, which means Jehovah is salvation, that the one bearing the name Jesus, Joshua, Yeshua, that Jehovah is salvation. Many of the young Jewish girls would name their sons Joshua or Jesus in hopes that God would use their son to bring salvation. And here, Mary, the highly favored one, the one who the Lord God was with, the one who was blessed, was chosen by God to bear this son, Jesus, so that for you and I, as we're reminded it in Matthew, for he shall save the people from their sins. And aren't you glad today that Jesus came to save us from our sins? No longer we carry our guilt and shame. No longer are we separated from God. But because of, for those of us who put our hope and our faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, we can come into a right relationship with God. We need saving today, folks. There's family members, there's friends, there's co-workers, there's classmates. You might be here uh, online or listening to a recording because someone forwarded you to this recording. Maybe you need saving today. Maybe today is the day and today is the moment to come and receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Jesus came to save us from our guilt, from our shame, most of all, from our sins. And our sins no longer count against us as we put our hope and our faith and receive Jesus and follow Him as our Lord and Savior. What good news! So I love Christmas, folks. So I love Christmas. Christmas, right, reminds us the birth, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. I love what Gabriel said. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Right? No one greater than the Son of the Most High, Jesus Christ. Mary had a question for Gabriel. How will this be since I am a virgin? How will this be? Have you ever wondered how God was going to do things um, in your life? God, how are you going to provide um, uh, for the wedding? God, how are you going to provide uh, for the kids? God, how, how are you going to um, bring healing uh, to that sickness? Or God, how are you going to restore that relationship? Um, God, how are you going to break my addiction? Right? Have you ever wondered from God, like, God, how are you going to do that? I know you can. Your word says that you are more than able. Right? God is more than able. Type it in the chat. God is more than able. Right? Tell the person next to you, God is more than able. God is more than able to do whatever it is that he wants to do. He is all powerful. He's the almighty one. Have you ever wondered that? How God was going to do something in your life? And here's Mary. Mary wondered, how are you going to do this? How will this be since I am a virgin? It wasn't asking in doubt. It was asking in wonder. Like, wow, God, I know you can do great and miraculous things. I just have some questions. <laughs> I just have some questions. What is the procedures? Like, well, what is the next step? God, what, what are you going to do? See, she believed that God can do whatever He says He's going to do. My question for you and I this morning, do you believe? Do you believe that God is more than able? I believe God is more than able today. God can use you and I today. The very hope of every girl in Israel was to see this Joshua, this Yeshua, or for you and I, we call him Jesus, be born. And Jesus, the fulfillment of that hope, came to this one young girl, this one young teenager named Mary, and a girl from Nazareth, from a place tucked away very common. Nothing extravagant or remarkable about this place. A beautiful young girl in character and in spirit named Mary. 
And look what the angel of the Lord responded to Mary. And I believe the Spirit of God wants to respond to us. The angel answered Mary, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. How are you and I going to accomplish the will of God in our lives? How are we going to break our addictions? How are we going to live a life that's holy and pleasing unto the Lord? How can we live, like, not stress-free, but stress-proof our lives and be at peace and have the joy and the victory, being joyful and triumphant during this holiday season? It's that the Holy Spirit will come upon us. As the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, and the power, say the power, right? That's important. The power of the Most High will overshadow you, will come upon you. What the angel Gabriel was telling Mary is like how, how, how the cloud came upon Moses when Moses was on the mountaintop and met with Moses. Similarly, the presence of God will come upon you, Mary, and God will give you the power God will give you the power and the Holy Spirit will come upon you to do this miraculous thing. What a beautiful, beautiful reminder today that God has called you and I to be more than conquerors. He has called us to be victorious. How? The Holy Spirit will come upon us and the power of the Most High God. He will empower us, folks. That's the good news for you and I today, that we don't have to do it on our own strength. In fact, we can't do it on our own strength, in our own wisdom. We need to cry out to God. Have you ever wondered why when you come to a service and you come to a worship service, you sing the songs and you feel the presence of God? And I'm not just saying just the feelings, but knowing that God is with us and all our sensories are heightened. That we can feel, sense, even at times smell, see God moving. And then when we leave that worship service, we wonder, what happened? How come I don't have that feeling anymore? I said this a few weeks ago, at least uh, in the in-person service. It's because we stop doing the very things we do at worship service on our own. Reading the Word of God praying, worshiping, declaring the promises of God. See, that needs to be on a day in and day out, daily basis, folks. We need to start our day and end our day worshiping God, acknowledging, giving thanks to God in song, in praise, in our prayers, reading His Word, declaring His Word out loud over our lives, over the lives of our family. We need to do what we do in church in our own personal lives. We need to keep doing it. We need to keep coming together. Like what that song says, O come, all ye faithful. O let us come and adore Him. Come, let us adore Him. Let these words from the angel Gabriel announcing it to Mary resonate in our lives. For nothing, say nothing, will be impossible with God. For nothing will be impossible with God. A better translation is, whatever God says that He's going to do, He's going to do it. That's, that's what this, this verse means. For nothing will be impossible with God. The situation that you're in, nothing is impossible with with God. If God says He's going to do it, He's going to do it. Just like how God told Abraham and Sarah in their old age that they're going to bore, uh, give birth and, and, uh, to a son named Isaac. And Isaac was born. They gave birth, at, well, Sarah gave birth in her old age so that Abraham and Sarah can fulfill the promise of God when God says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your children and your children's children. Your descendants are going to be countless. And God told this to Abraham when he was without a child. And his wife was of old age and was barren. And many throughout history know that 
when the woman is barren, it may seem like it's a curse. And yet God says, I'm going to fulfill my promises. Why? For nothing will be impossible with God. What seems impossible to you? Maybe today is the day for you to come and approach God before his throne of grace. And say, God, I've heard you said of this in my life. And I believe and I'm holding on to your promises. I remember when Christina and I first got married and none of our parents, my dad had already passed away. My mom and her dad and mom were alive. We made it our mission. We made it our mission to see that our parents would come to know the Lord. Our first couple years into our marriage, Christina was able to lead first her dad to the Lord over the phone. I still remember overhearing that conversation when Christina was leading her dad to receive Jesus Christ as his own personal Lord and Savior. He was on his knees in, in Tennessee and just asking, what do I ask God? And when Christina's mom came to live with us, because uh, her dad soon passed away after receiving um, Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Christina's mom came to live with us uh, for a couple of years. And Christina had the opportunity to lead her mom to the Lord. And I remember that glorious day um, with Pastor Greg Brennis, water baptizing my mother-in-law together. What a beautiful scene. What a beautiful memory. I, and it seemed impossible seemed impossible and then there was my mom I'm like how, how am I going to reach my mom after all these years and God used Christina and I together to lead my mom to come to know Jesus Christ and I don't know why it didn't dawn on me to get her an Ilocano Bible <laughs> so she can read the word of God and we know that for Christina's mom and dad they're rejoicing in heaven and my mom, still here on earth, gets to be joyful and triumphant. Why? Because God did the impossible. To see our parents come to know and follow Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. For nothing will be impossible with God. As we prepare to take communion this morning, can we respond to God's word? Can we respond to his spirit this morning? As Mary responded to the angel Gabriel, as Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. I believe as followers of Christ this morning, can we have the same attitude, heart's attitude as Mary? A heart of surrender and saying, I am the servant of the Lord. God, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in and through our lives. The glorious thing is that baby Jesus grew up. Baby Jesus grew up in the house of Joseph and Mary. And Jesus became 100% man. 100% God lived the perfect life that you and I should have lived and he died a death that you and I should have died in our place and again as we prepare for communion let's be reminded that baby Jesus didn't remain baby Jesus we celebrate Christmas because Jesus came to earth to die for our sins the grave could not hold him for three days. Could not hold him. He rose from the grave to defeat sin and death. Why? So you and I could be triumphant over our sins and be full of joy because we could come into a right relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this passage of Scripture to be reminded how much you love us, God that you sent your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, for us. We give thanks to you, God, right now.
for displaying your love. We celebrate you, O oh Lord Jesus, and all that you've done in our lives, all that you're doing in our lives. For we're reminded today, nothing, nothing will be impossible for you, God. Nothing will be impossible for you. We thank you for the body that was broken and the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross, that we can have the forgiveness of sins. Yes, first and foremost, the forgiveness of sin. But also that we can have victory over every area of our lives today. So Lord, even right now, as we take communion, we give thanks. Thank you for the joy that you bring us this holiday season. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go ahead and take up the bread together. Let's go ahead and take up the cup together. Cry out to God for the situation that you're in that seems impossible. And watch the Holy Spirit do great work. He may not change your circumstance, but at the very least, he'll change your heart. If you need further prayer, go ahead and click that pray button. Someone will join you to minister with you in a private chat. I want to encourage you next week, join us for our Christmas service there at St. Anthony Retreat Center. Invite family, invite friends. We're going to have a great time coming together to adore, to adore our awesome God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here and worshiping with us today. The Lord bless you. You be blessed, you highly favored one. And go be a blessing to those around, around your lives. Go ahead and invite others to come and journey with you to know this awesome God. God bless you. We love you. Have a great week. And we'll see you next weekend.